It wasn't easy growing up in the 1980s. There was no internet. X Hamster only existed as a cassette tape that you could play on your Commodore 64 computer. And this is how it looked. If I'd been making these videos in the 80s, this is almost certainly how I would have looked. And these are some of the fragrances I would have been wearing. Let's get into the intro, courtesy of Lex Ellis. mention is going to be one that I just got today, Milano Cento, released in 1989. It's been re-released now, it smells absolutely great, and uh, just because I've only got it today, I've squeezed it in as an honourable mention. It's a barbershop fragrance, lovely citrus, cinnamon, lavender. If you like things like the modern Rive Gauche Poirom from Yves Saint Laurent, you might just like this one. So, a couple of other honourable mentions first, these ones you can't buy any more easily, uh, it's not produced anymore, this one, Paco Rabanne Sport, a citrus. Uh, fougere fragrance. So this is much more heavy and masculine than today's sport fragrances. I guess it's a flanker to Paco Rabanne Pour Homme from 1974. Opens with great lime, citrus notes, and it's got some really mossy, ferny greenness in the base. Uh, really great fragrance, great performance. If you can find an old bottle, worth checking out if you like old stuff. Next honourable mention, still uh, gettable today, but I think it's been officially discontinued. It's Bowling Green from 1986 from Jeffrey Bean. Similar story in how I describe it a, a bit to Paco Rabanne. Great burst of citrus in the opening, and then some mossy green herbal stuff after that. This one, a uh, little bit more, leans towards an eau de cologne feel to me, but some fougere elements as well. So I, it actually reminds me of Aqua de Parma Colonia, uh, which you can still get today. So great choice, really can be got inexpensive if you look around, but I think it has been discontinued, hence only an honorable mention. Okay, so we're going with chronological order now. So 1981 saw the release of Jewels from the house of Christian Dior. This one is, uh, it was, it predates Koros, but has some similarities with Yves Saint Laurent's chorus. It's got a really crisp citrus opening, but then there's a lot of animalistic stuff underneath that. It's a mossy fougere with some muskiness in there and a little bit of spice. Uh, so we've got some animalic notes. I think there's castorium listed in the notes, so that's something to do with the beavers. <laughs> nether regions which has an animalic feel and they, they loved this in the 80s so this one really uh, stood the test of time because you can get it today really released it in 2016 and it still smells great a little bit fresher and crisper than my really old bottle here is the 2016 re-release but still a great reformulation and still essentially the same scent so really one to look out for and a beauty from 1980 next the legend that is Koros Yves Saint Laurent Chorus. Okay, so this one was released in 1981 from Pierre Bourdon, the genius perfumer, and again it's a powerhouse. It's a fougere with tons of muskiness, a little bit of soapy freshness actually. It's not as uh, animalic as some people say. It is fresh and it can be sexy, but it is very, very heavy and it has a little bit of a men's gym locker room. Some people say urinal feel. I don't think it's that bad. I actually like this fragrance, but it is heavy going. I've got an old bottle. My bottle's from the 90s, so the formula was stronger than today's version. If you can get one with the silver shoulders and you need to check a few more details for exact eras, they are a little bit stronger. Really heavy masculine masterpiece that was worn tons and tons throughout the 80s and still stands the test of time today. Next up is Cacherel Poron. This one was released in 1981. It's a completely different story, much more fresh. It's got a nutmeg note that distinguishes it and also a lot of cis, um, citrus stuff in there. There's ylang lang and sandalwood as well, but some lemon and bergamot in the top. Very fresh, but spicy, but no animalic stuff in this one. So this one was different, it was futuristic. It was a little bit of a cocky young man's fragrance when it came out. And yeah, definitely nothing uh, dated about it. In today's version, it still smells great. I've got a vintage one and the new one. There isn't a massive difference, but maybe the old one does smell a little bit richer. It's really worth checking out. It lies a little bit unloved on the bottom shelves of our uh, pharmacists or, or uh, places that sell fragrances, but don't miss out. Cacherelle Pour Homme is a brilliant fragrance. And yes, yeah, all the music in this video was supplied by Lex Ellis. You can hear it playing in the background. I'm gonna hand over to Lex Ellis for a few of his thoughts on 80s fragrances now.
guys, it's me, your local 80s man Lex Else. You'll probably remember me from my best selling extreme powerhouse workout, Lex Else's 80s powerhouse workout, available on VHS right now. So, let me guess, you thought you could just put on some Kuros and that make you a man? Oh no, you need to take those skinny jeans and those poofy little vans and toss them away. You need to be wearing a pair of these and you need to be wearing a pair of these. Added as superstars, not that checkered hipster skater crap. Oh no! So, you're the sort of guy that wants to buff up and be a big man. Well, you need a perfect 80 cent, but you're lucky because Mr. Smelly's invited me along to help you on your way. He's a very good guy, but I'm going to give my take on it anyway with Lexels's 80s workout special. So, my top three I have for you today are Kuvos, of course. Laptis, of course, I'm one that I think deserves a lot more attention. Hugo Boss, number one. So, I absolutely love these three. I love Kuvos, and these all have their own sort of thing. Kuvos is the ultimate sweaty macho gym scent. I mean, really, if you're feeling the burn and you're thinking, oh, I'm thinking they're giving up, I'm telling you, wear some Kuvos. It will inspire you to keep going. It's crazy. You know, science can't even explain how amazing Kuvos is. Next up, we have Laptis. This has an excellent excellent sort of rich scent. I actually prefer this over Kuros for its richness. I think it smells better, but in the way of smelling better, it doesn't have that macho aggressiveness that sweaty, dirty vibe Kuros has. Of course, there's Hugo Boss number one. I'm going to wear this because I've worn this in a while and I love it. This one just smells, it has a very honey tobacco urinal cake vibe, but it's really good. It smells like a really classy bar. You've got a linen jacket on, you're picking up chicks at a bar using cheesy chat up lines that work really well because it's the 1980s. So, that's my top three. Either one of these will be fine for you working out in tight spandex at a gym somewhere being a big man. So yeah, back to Mr. Smelly and thank you for having me on your show. Next, it's Chanel Antaeus. This is a brilliant, brilliant fragrance, still available today. The modern formulation is fine. That's the one I've got. I uh, have smelled the old one as well, there's not that much difference. It's a bit like Koros in that there are some masculine heavy elements in this one. A lot of oak moss and uh, there's clary sage, but it has a little bit more of a refined feel. It's a little bit less rough around the edges. So uh, if you find the idea of Koros appealing, but you just find it a bit much, I think this has less of the gym locker room feel, a little bit more of a more sophisticated feel about it, a bit less of a ruffian. Okay, next up. It's Armani Eau Pour Homme. This one was released in 1984 uh, and Tess was 1981 again. It's a citrus aromatic one and it reminds me a little bit of some Aqua de Palma fragrances in fact. It's uh, very fresh but a little bit old school. No animalic stuff in here at all. Lovely woodiness and herbal rosemary type notes there. It lasts well and the modern formulation is absolutely great. This is an older formulation, not from the 80s, but uh, not the one we get today. The silver top and silver bottom tell you it's a more recent formula. They do smell exactly the same. I've tried them on skin. I can't tell the difference. Longevity still seems good on the modern one. Beautiful, elegant, Italian sophistication in this scent and apparently Giorgio Armani himself used to like to wear this one. So that's praise indeed. I find this one absolutely exquisite and a great fragrance from the 80s that's often overlooked. Okay, next up, it's Green Irish Tweed from the House of Creed. This came out in 1985. We sometimes forget it's that old. A walk in the Irish countryside, they say, is what this one smells like. Well, I walked in the Irish countryside. It didn't smell quite as nice as this, but this is a beautiful, fresh, green, spring-like scent. Lemon verbena sandalwood iris violet leaf combine here to create a beautiful green sophisticated freshness and this scent is absolutely timeless and elegant it does not smell in any way dated some of the others have a little bit of an 80s feel this one could be any time cool water i didn't include that by davidoff in my list because that was basically a copy of this some people say pierre bourdon was responsible for this one he certainly was responsible for cool water by davidoff which came along in 1988 but this is the original still the best Modern formulation, fine to me. Next up, an unusual one. We don't hear a lot about this one, Zerius. That is actually discontinued in this bottle, but you can get the Parfums Mythic version, which I've heard is great, I haven't tried it. This is an older formula, but probably from the 90s. It came out in 1986. It's an aromatic fougere fragrance. The difference here is no animaticness, or at least that's very much toned down. It's soapy. It's got amber in the base. It's a little bit warmer and smoother, and it's got some florals in there. So they kind of, um, 
they've kind of sanitized the ar ar aromatic fougere, the heaviness of things like Koros with this one, and made it a little bit more likable and easy to wear as the decade wore on. Fashion has changed a little bit. It's still quite 80s smelling and it's still got a retro feel, but it's really, really interesting. It hasn't been dumbed down. It's still worth uh, trying out if you think things like Koros are good, but you want something different. Zarius is brilliant and more wearable and more modern uh, smelling to me, uh, and just a fascinating fragrance I'm still getting to know, but definitely one of the greats from the 80s uh, was Zarius, and again it's one we don't hear much about now. Next up we have Lapidus Porom from the house of Ted Lapidus, the beast mode legend, mine is a modern bottle. Basically it's Koros and then some. It has a, a little bit of pineapple, a bit of fruitiness, a little bit more sweetness maybe than Koros, but a lot of the same animalic men's locker room kind of feel. It's really, really strong. It's actually kind of sexy in a dirty, nasty way. And that was the kind of thing that was absolutely politically correct and okay in the 80s. I wish it still was. Now, next up we've got Bois de Portugal from Creed again. I do like Creed and the 1980s saw two great releases from them in my humble opinion. Bois de Portugal from 1987 was the other one. Lapidus Prime was also 87 by the way. This one is a little bit like Chanel pour Monsieur on steroids in my opinion. Uh, it's got a really nice bergamot opening, there's lavender, there's sandalwood. Uh, it is not one of the more fresh, fresh, fresh Creed ones, but there is a certain green freshness combined with a smooth, masculine woodiness and almost a bit of a barbershop feel, but I think there's more complexity than that, so it's more than just a barbershop scent. It's a real beauty, uh, I love it. The current version that you can buy now smells absolutely great. I don't know how different it smelled when it first came out. I think it might be discontinued when they change bottle sizes to 50 and 100 ml. It's one of my favorite fragrances ever. It was released in 1987. Finally, we have Fahrenheit Christian Dior, 1988. I've only got a mini one. Mine's a 2000 something bottle. If you get the bottles with the, the curved lid like that, I think that means it's from a period before it got messed up a bit recently and became weaker in around about 2012. Some people say you've got to go back to before 2004 to be really safe. I think mine's a 2002. Petrol, leather, violet leaf and a real red inferno feel is what we got from this one. This one, so different when you think back to Dior Jewels, we've now come forward to the very end of the 80s, 1988, and this was a really revolutionary fragrance. It's pretty timeless because it doesn't really uh, usher in a trend that happened in the 90s or anything because it was still unique. No one really ever copied this particularly in the main designer sense. It's just a unique and amazing scent, much loved by people. A ruffian, a rough leather, petroleum, leather jacket kind of feel with this one. Very sexy at the time, lots of girls apparently swooned over this one. And Fahrenheit, of course, has to make one of the top 10 fragrances of the 1980s. What did you think of my list? Remember to comment and let me know. And also remember, whatever we're doing in life, let's project. See you next time, bye bye.